Hello again and welcome back to another video. This is a repair video. Well, predominantly we're going to be looking at um, fungus. Um, fungus in lenses. Dealing with the fungus is probably the easiest bit, but getting to it is going to be the, the hardest part. Um, I'd recommend only doing it on prime lenses to start with until you build your confidence because uh, zoom lenses contain a lot more elements and a lot more moving parts and uh, once you get a zoom lens apart it's going to be quite difficult to get them back together again. The other point I should add is don't do this on an expensive lens, it's better to pay um, to get a professional to do it. If the lens, this one came out of my scrap pile because I don't think the aperture works on this. No. This is a Nikon F Fit and it is a Kieron 28mm F2. And I think on this one that the yep, the aperture is stuck on it, so the aperture is just fully open. And it also has fungus. Um, which I don't know whether you can see that, but there is fungus in there. So that's my advice initially, is, is to start with prime lenses and cheap ones that it doesn't matter if you mess it up or break it or damage it or whatever. I did make an earlier video about removing fungus, but unfortunately I broke the front element of that lens and it was a Zuku 100mm 2.8. Got the fungus out okay, but um, managed to drop a metal lens hood on the front element and uh, it cracked in half. So uh, yeah, that lens needs further repair. So I'd suggest the first thing to do is just to give the lens a really good clean just to make sure that you know exactly what you're looking at rather than it may be a piece of dirt. So if you remember the method, you need some distilled water, some cotton buds, Q-tips depending on what region in the world you're living in. Uh, so a little tub of distilled water, some Q-tips and a, a clean cloth just to dab the excess water off. And then you can go in and you can clean the lens. Like I say, you only do a quarter at a time with this distilled water. Small circular patterns just to clean it off. And then with the other end of your Q-tip, just dry that section off. And then use another one. They're cheap enough to clean the rest of it. Well, the next quarter depends how big the elements are to be honest this one I'm just going to give it a general sort of clean just to get the dirt off if there's any dirt on there it's not too bad actually and then we just get in there take that moisture out I don't want moisture in the lens Just make sure that the front and the back elements are nice and clean. Got it on a soft cloth here. I say this was came out of my junk pile. So I'm just going to do half and half with this one. It's not the final clean, but I just want to take any surface dirt off. It's not been protected. It's been in a plastic bag, but it's not been protected. You can see there is a bit of dirt on the end of that. You can see it. Probably a good idea to use a, a rocket blower on it just to get the excess dirt out of the rings, etc. Because this would be quite a nice lens if it was working and didn't have some fungus in it. 28 F2 is quite a... Well, that's probably soft as anything, but... Yeah, get yourself a rocket blower or some sort of blower just to clean off any light dust and dirt. And then, uh, like I say, just uh, try and clean the elements that you can get to. That's nice and easy. It is worth doing some research online. See if there is a video of taking this particular, you know, the particular item apart. Um, the guy who contacted me regarding this, I think he was looking at stripping down a, a spot meter that had fungus. Um, 
I don't have that, but I don't have any spot meters. Um, I think they're they're very expensive what they are. If I want to do a spot reading, I just use a DSLR and it's spot mode. Which is a bit naughty really, but so the front side of this lens doesn't look too bad. And the back side You can see the fungus, but it's uh, it's not very easy to see. One of the lens that was really heavily infected with fungus, but I don't have any that are really heavily infected with fungus. So I'll look on the camera and see if you can see that. Shining a light through it would probably help. Let's grab the torch. Put the torch under the half lodge, yeah. You can see it there, look. You can see all the fungus in there, see it? So yeah, that lens, although it look, doesn't look too bad to the eye, shine a light through it and it's like a different world. So yeah, this lens, but it appears to be on the back end of the lens, rather than the, uh, the front end of the lens. So my initial thoughts are to go in from the back, not from the front. And that kind of ties in with the aperture not working, because if we could get the aperture iris working... We might actually have a usable lens. It's a AI coupled lens. It has the, uh, the little tab for the AI cameras. And it has one sort of screw hole for the, um, the rabbit's ears. So it might be useful if we can save it. But if not, it's not the end of the world. So we've cleaned it up. We've looked at it. And we've determined that we want to get the back of this off. Now again, I recommend that you don't try and use European or American standard tools. Um, you want tools that are JIS certified. If you search online, you can find them. And those are just the Japanese standard. And that's what they use when they uh, manufacture and assemble cameras and the lenses and motorbikes and loads of other stuff. So yeah, JIS standard tools. And then at least you won't strip threads and damage things and get all hot and bothered and frustrated and throw it across the room so we need to find something that's going to fit into that and take it out oh, it's always I'm always dropping things on the floor so that's coming out easy enough and we need to um, to keep all these things this is what I use I use bits of a, a pill box you can get these fairly cheap but it has a lot of different compartments so you can segregate what screws came from where if you've got a poor memory like me or if you're just clumsy like me as well it's a very useful way of so this first compartment will be for these screws at the back I don't know if this is magnetic or not but uh, we just take these screws out. Yep. There's one. There's another one. There's the third. Magnetic tools are very useful as well. Um, or tweezers. Well, and tweezers. Tweezers enable you to pick things up very easily. Sorry, I'm back on the uh, on the phone for this one because at least with the phone I can have it plugged into the charger while I'm filming. That DSLR has really upset me this week. I was going to say it's the autofocus is rubbish and the battery life is unbelievable when you're doing video. So, that's kind of lined up with that. So we need to find out if we need to make any marks for reassembly. Because it's important to know how things go back on, otherwise it might not mount correctly, etc. And it depends what that's actually screwed into. They are quite long screws. So with these, it looks like there's something else underneath it. And it looks like that goes about there. 
So I'm going to try and make a little mark there. So I know where the lock pin goes. That's where the lock pin's going to line up. And then this. He says I should. I've not done one of these lenses before. Like I say, all lenses you're going to have to learn as you go. Or find a video of somebody doing the job. Ooh. Okay, watch out for the aperture ring there. Right. So this is the back lens group. I don't know if we need to disassemble this further to actually get down in there or whether we can get that out as it is. So looking at it, it unscrews. What they have a habit of doing, I always call it nail varnish or uh, nail polish. Um, they tend to use some sort of uh, very light adhesive on threads to lock things into place. But it looks like it just done twists. If you come across it, and I was embarrassed buying this, but uh, you need some um, nail remover. And I chose this one because it's 98% acetone, which is a pretty high percentage. You want a high percentage of acetone um, nail thingy, nail polish remover, or what they call it, nail varnish. That's what you need to use if you come across threads that have been locked with this sort of clear nail varnish. All right, this ring just lifts out. There's a line there that lines up with that. Okay. So if we look into there, we need to get that one off. And like I say, it's on a screw mount which we can clearly see this part here will just pull off like so and you can see where it goes and it gives us a bit better access into there and I don't know if there is anything for there for locking onto right so we need to find some way of getting it off there's no hook for um, pliers or anything but it certainly looks like it's on that back element. That seems to be a good starting point anyway. And it does look like there is some sort of varnish around that. So you just take this, your Q-tips or cotton buds again. You need to give this kind of stuff stinks. You need to give this a good soak. In this stuff it's going to be the hardest part is getting it in there and what this will do is it will loosen up that stuff that they use to lock things into place here's a key on lens and they're pretty well regarded generally they're a contract manufacturer a bit like casino who make their own stuff as well as stuff for other people so you find with certain lenses things like Vivitar their lens manufacturer was all contracted out and certain lenses from certain factories are much better regarded than lenses from other factories. You can normally check up where they were made by the serial numbers. There's a load of websites that have lists of manufacturing serial numbers and plant codes, etc. So you can see who made what. Things like Halimex, Vivitar, Optimax, Sunagore, Panagore. You find a lot of them are all made in the same factory. But it depends on the lens. Well, I guess that's the iris operating mechanism. But it makes quite a good cleaning compound as well, this acetone. Alright, I think this is a job for the big boys. I need a big spanner on that one. You can see there's no there's no wear to put a, a lens spanner on it. There's no cutouts or anything. So it's one of those grip it and twist sort of jobs. So what I use for that is my very old, big one of these things. That's gonna get something undone, he hopes. And I'm gonna put another shabby cloth on top of that try and use clean cloths like I say this is a lens I don't really care about I'm just doing this for your entertainment really 
and then oh that's quite wide isn't it you need to get a grip on it you need to get a grip man I don't have a lot of strength in my arms as it is so maybe some more acetone dumped on there might do the trick if at first you don't succeed put on some more acetone obviously it evaporates um, it's another fluid you could use for cleaning shutters um, if you get that oily gunky mess on shutters I prefer to use lighter fuel naphtha but you could use or try um, acetone on there where one substance doesn't work try the other one normally one or other of them will work you can see I've pinched the metal there my grip isn't too good at the moment so we just liberally dash a load of this on there and we'll give it a bit of chance to work its way in there's a screw thread there so I'm presuming it unscrews doesn't look like the rest of it unscrews it's so something should unscrew, I don't know if that's a lock nut or something in there. If it is a lock nut, it's not on this part. I say it is trial and error. Now, so I suggest if you haven't got any old crappy lenses, buy some off of eBay for next to nothing and practice. It's the only way to learn. Watch YouTube videos and uh, learn from other people's mistakes like I say I wouldn't do it on your prized uh, 80 to 200 2.8 zoom until you've got some idea of what you're doing the zooms have got a lot more elements in them so there's a lot uh, a lot more assembly and disassembly required that's why I suggest you start with primes and once you become proficient in doing primes then you can think about moving on to zoom lenses it's not a case of, well, I'll buy some, uh, some infected lenses on eBay and I'll clean them up and sell them on. Um, you won't make money doing that. Unless you're absolutely spot on at doing it. A lot of people don't worry about it. If it's mild, I wouldn't really worry about it. If it's just starting around the edges and that, I wouldn't really bother about it. It can damage the coatings on the lenses because obviously when we talk about coatings it's not just on the outside elements like on the back and on the front it's on the internal elements as well because the idea of the coatings is to stop reflection they call it AR coatings anti-reflection coatings because when light hits glass it just goes everywhere doesn't it so yeah that's why multi-coating is uh, so useful because it makes makes nice images because it gets rid of all those internal reflections but there's something to be said for single coatings as well because single coatings with black and white the old style lenses is quite a popular look and uh, understandably so right let's have another go at uh, embarrassing myself with this thing can't see how wide it is it's pretty wide as I have trouble with such a, a wide lens and I try and get it undone. I need to get it right in the jaws of this thing. Right, maybe I'll come back when I've done that bit. Okay, this concludes part one of this uh, lens overhaul. <laughs> Dealing with fungus and um, a diaphragm that was stuck open. Still have my little box of screws here. Uh, in part two we will deal with the actual fungus and also try and sort out the uh, the aperture mechanism um, spoiler alert um, yeah we've managed to free it up and get it working so uh, come back for part two and we'll carry on with the uh, the repair of this Kiron 28 millimeter f2 thanks for watching hope you found this interesting and enjoyable and look forward to seeing you in part two